Hello, welcome to the next edition of the NPTEL online certification course on microelectronics device to circuits. We start with the second module of combinational logical design. In our previous module, we have seen what do you mean by propagation delay and how can you reduce your propagation delay in a complementary logic. We also saw what is the meaning of combinational logic and uh, how can you design uh, in a combinational logic given a Boolean expression. So, if there is a Boolean expression available to you, how can you design it on a complementary logic. What we will be doing now is look into another important uh, parameter and that is known as power dissipation. Now, so the next uh, let me give you the outline of what we are going to do. So, we will look into the concept of power consumption and dissipation as CMOS logic gate. We will look into uh, dynamic or uh, glitching transitions and then how we can do uh, reduce the switching activity. And after we have understood all these basic concepts, uh, we will take up what is known as a ratioed logic and within which we will study uh, pseudo NMOS inverter. And then we will look into what is known as a DC VSL, uh, uh, which is also uh, a better form of a ratioed logic, we will see how it works out. And then uh, therefore, using DC VSL, what are the design considerations? for a DC VSL logic and then we will finally recapitulate uh, uh, for this for this uh, particular module. Uh, let me um, let me explain to you before I move even forward, let me give you an idea about uh, what is power consumption because we need to find out from basic uh, this thing inverter. You remember if in an inverter you have an input here right and then you have an output V out there is a load capacitance here. So, whenever you have a 0, uh, this switches on as I discussed, therefore, this goes to 1 because your VDD tries to charge. So, you have this charging path in this manner. So, C L gets charged to 1. Whenever now, whenever your input becomes equals to 1, this becomes off and this becomes on right and when this becomes on uh, this charge which was there across C L discharges and this becomes 0. So, this is the basic fundamental principle of this inverter. Now, you see whenever your input is 0, you are drawing power from the VDD rail and therefore, you have half C L into VDD square as the total amount of power uh, which you are actually extracting from the VDD rail over a single cycle. So, I am doing say a 0 to 1 transition and that is all, I am doing a 0 to 1 transition right. Now, uh, in the next half cycle when 1 comes into picture, this switches on and the same charge or the put, uh, energy or the power actually goes down to the ground. So, over a cycle of over a period of cycle or over a 1 period of cycle 0 to 1 transition, you have actually utilized C L times V D D square half plus half because half you have taken and half you have you have done, but then total will be uh, total power dissipation will be still equals to half C L V D D square right. Now, with this knowledge or with this basic idea, we can say that that the total power consumption over say one cycle of operation. So, 0 1 0. So, this is one, one cycle of operation. We have 2 times 0 coming into picture. So, half plus half is equal to C L into V D D square right. So, over one period of cycle from this to this, this is one period of cycle right. So, you are starting from here ending here you have got 0 0 and therefore, you get C L V D D square as the power consumed from the V D D rail. With this knowledge, uh, what we do is we define another term known as dynamic power dissipation. It primarily means that that whenever the inverter is in operation mode, operation in the sense that whenever your input is varying from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 and there is a large input bit train coming into picture and the output is also therefore, varying from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0, we define this to be as a dynamic operation. What is a static operation? Static means that when it is given 1 or 0 and output is latched to either 0 or 1 and you have fixed that operation, we define that to be a static operation. Then we define dynamic power dissipation as 
P equals P is the dynamic power dissipation is given as ha, ha, this, this quantity where alpha is defined as the switching activity or switching parameter and Cl VDD square we have already discussed the power multiplied by frequency you can understand why because in one cycle you are dissipating Cl VDD square. So, if there are F such cycles available to you this will be the total power which you will be dissipating in F such cycles. So, that is the reason you multiply with F. An interesting comes term comes here which is 0 to 1 alpha 0 to 1 I will explain to this to you in a, in a detailed fashion. Let us see let us say you have you have a clock uh, in this manner right you have a clock and there are 4 clock cycles which are there. Then uh, let us suppose my output goes something like this. This is my clock or input let us suppose and this is my output. So, output I have got so I have got something and then at it, this rising edge of the clock I have a 0 to 1 transition. Similarly, at this rising edge of the clock I have a 0 to 1 transition. So, please understand uh, and, 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 and at this edge for uh, at this rising edge of the clock I have 1 to 0 transition right. So, please understand 0 to 1 transitions are power consuming and power dissipating sort of cycles right. So, you see of the 4 clock cycles here 1, 2, 3, 4 there are 2 0 to 1 transitions. How many? 0 to 1. How many number? There are 2 number of 0 to 1 transitions, which means that we define our activity factor as equals to 2 by 4, which is equals to 0 0.5. If there were 3 such cycles, it will be 3 by 5. If there are 4 such cycles, it will be 1, right? And the 4 by 4 is equals to 1. So, activity factor is that. Now, activity factor, as I discussed with you, will have 2 components it's static component, which is a function of the network topology. As I, this is what I was talking about. Uh, that so, so depending upon is it NAND2, NOR2 logic or whatever logic you are using, you will have fixed number of 0 to 1 transitions for certain number of input clock period. That will determine your alpha 0 to 1 transitions. Now, dynamic component uh, which is the function of timing behavior of the circuits. So, di dynamic behavior, dynamic component uh, uh, it depends upon the uh, timing behaviors which means that uh, say your clock is there, but 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 your uh, the input data train is there, but the input data train is not same for both the inputs. There is some delay between them. Then there will be some glitches which we will discuss later on about which also alpha remains. But primarily we will be looking into this first thing which is basically your static component right. Uh, we also define um, the, the, the we also define uh, one important point that see as I discussed with you how do you how do you calculate that the probability see the, the 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 issue is that the probability or alpha going from 0 to 1 is defined as the probability that one state is 0 and another state is 1 of course you can understand why because uh, 0 to 1 means the initial state should be 0 and the final state should be equals to 1. So, if P0 is the probability that the output will be in 0 state in one cycle and P1 is the probability that the output will be in one state in the next cycle, then alpha 0 to 1 is also defined as P0 into P1 product of the two multiplication and therefore, P1 can be written as 1 minus P0 because either you can have 0 or 1 therefore, 1 minus P0 is the effective value of alpha 0 to 1. Now, let me come to dynamic or glitching glitches we will we will come back to this uh, this uh, concept of uh, uh, alpha 0 to 1 later on at this stage you just have to keep in mind that this is a basically a, a an activity factor whose value is between 0 and 1 right. One is the highest value and uh, which is basically a clock and it will go on decreasing depending upon the topology which you are using it C L is the effective load which is visible to you at the end of the uh, uh, combinational logic block. VDD is the applied source voltage, uh, uh, voltage power supply and F is the frequency of operation. Let us let us look at this uh, concept of glitching and I will explain to you how does glitching affect your overall uh, delay. Now, if these are NAND gates here. So, I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 NAND gates and I am giving an input uh, 0 to 1 at this particular point 0 to 1. So, if you look at the NAND gate it is typical uh, uh, truth table will look like like this right. So, suppose it is 1 right and here input goes from 0 to 1 the input goes from 0 to 1 in the input side. So, 
initially when it is 1 0 1 0 output will be equals to 1 output will be equals to 1 and then when it goes to 1 this will glitch this will go back to 0 right, but this glitching takes place equally across the path. So, you see I have plotted here output voltage here the voltage at these particular points out 1, out 2, out 3, out 4 versus the time and this is my this is my uh, so this is my uh, input here right and this is this is my output here. So, whenever my input was low whenever my input was low input was low means one of them is so, so whenever the input is low means either this or this the output is 1 1 and therefore output is latched to a high value. Input goes high and your one of the other input was already high which I which which means that I am going from this state to this state. So, I am going from output 1 to output equals to 0, but the whole issue is this would have been true that all of the output will go to 0 together provided these did not have any intrinsic delay right. If did not if this if these did not have any delay then this going from 1 to 0 will imply that this will happen instantaneously as 0 to 1 transition is taking place in the input side. So, out 1 transition of 0 1 to 0 will take place instantaneously as 0 to 1 transition in the input side provided NAND 1 number 1 has got 0 delay, but this is not true and therefore, this 1 to 0 or 0 will appear in the output side of 1 only after a finite delay which is equal to the delay of this NAND gate. So, let us see uh, how does it influence my output. So, you see the output 1 goes to 0 you see the output 1 goes to 0 this this curve is basically output equals to 1 goes to 0. Why it goes to 0 because when my input goes from 0 to 1 the output goes from 1 to 0. Now, now what has happened is whenever my out, so, so you see this has already gone to 1 right till the time when this output was equals to 0. Uh, till a time when it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, it came to 0 because initially you had 1 and then 0 1 0 will give you uh, a 1 here. So, initially you had 1 1 right 1 1 means out 2 was start to falling down. So, look at this out 2 is the green one out 2 started to fall down why because at at, the, at, at some value suppose this is you, you did this at t equals to say 0 millisecond right. And, and this is ha, has got a delay of 1 millisecond. So, till 1 millisecond the output will be equals to 1. So, out, output will be 1 means this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1 implying that this will be always 0 and that is the reason you see the output starts to fall to this value. It comes towards it tries to go towards 0, but after 1 millisecond after 1 millisecond this 0 appears why because you now have a you have a transition taking place in the output side. So, out 1 goes from 1 to 0, 1 to 0 primarily means that out 2 will go from 0 to 1. So, now you see the out 2 goes to 0 to 1. So, you see uh, so, you, so similarly and so on and so forth if you go in, in, in this direction out 2, out 6, out, out 4, out 6 and out 8 all will first show a drop and then will go, go on increasing and as you can see in time domain they are shifting this words because this delay plus this delay plus this delay plus this delay plus this delay is all adding up the delays get added up and therefore, the time till which it goes to 0 is actually shifting towards the right right and this is known as a dynamic hazard or a glitch. That ideally so, so ideally if this chain would have been very long uh, a time would have come that uh, I would have actually seen this going down like this and then increasing. So, even if it is less than VDD by 2 I would have I would have seen it as 0 in reality whereas, it should have actually gone to 1 right. This is known as a dynamic transition or a glitching transition in a, a CMOS logic and that is one of the major important problem areas of uh, glitching. So, what the people do is something like this that they try to do what is known as logic restructuring. So, uh, how to reduce therefore, the switching activity right. Uh, switching activity remember was actually sorry switching activity is actually equals to 0 to 1 transition. Now, if you if you go back to 0 to 1 transitions you see uh, 0 to so, 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 what you are doing here you, you are doing a 1 to 0 here you are going a 0 to 1 here you are going 1 to 0 here and 0 to 1 right. So, you are allowing larger number of 1 0 to 1 transitions and therefore, power dissipation goes up right. So, so this, uh, this glitch helps you to increase the power dissipation not a good idea right and therefore, what we try to do is that we try to normalize the glitches or we reduce the glitches. How do you do it? By 
simply making logic restructuring and try to make it as symmetrical as possible right and rather than a chain structure you do a tree structure i will explain to you how did how does it help you in a chain as i discussed with you just now you have to so so o1 gate which is an and gate has to wait till the delay of the first gate for this to evaluate some value of o2 similarly this has to wait so o2 has to wait till d1 plus d2 d1 plus d2 till this comes out and f has to wait till d1 plus d2 plus d3 if this is d3 is the delay you got the point and therefore these internal blocks will be glitching and therefore they will add to the power total power glitching power right so what you do you convert this chain structure this is known as a chain structure to what is known as tree structure tree structure is a more symmetrical in nature which means that whenever ab is available to you and cd is available to you o0 and o1 appear together and therefore this appear together and therefore up f appears at exactly the same instant of time right overall delay also reduces because now you will have a overall delay of d1 plus d2 initially you had d1 plus d2 plus d3 so the delay was much larger frequency of operation will reduce right and you have a you have a you have a logic restructuring here which is basically a tree tree structure here and gives you a much lower logic uh, lower uh, sort of activity here another methodology which people adopted was what is known as input reordering input reordering means that uh, try to so let us suppose that the probability of a b c equal to 1 are 0.5 0.2 and 0.1 so a is basically 0.5 b is 0.2 and c is 0.1 the probability that they are equal to 1 now if the c is inserted so i have to, i have two logic so if you look very carefully z is equals to a dot b dot c right so it's an and logic which i'm trying to realize sorry and logic uh, for three input and and logic so rather than using a three input uh, obviously you can have, you can also have a three input and gate but i'm using a two input and gate two two input and gates so what i do i put a b here and then c here but c has got a probability of the least probability of going to 1 right in that case if you try to find out alpha 0 to 1 right from that initial uh, uh, p0 multiplied by p1 comes out to be equals to p0 into 1 minus p0 right similarly you, you know what the values are i can you put the values here and you can get the value of alpha 0 to 1 but there is another method that the least value which you get the least probability if you shift it to the earliest one and the most probability if shift to the latest stage you get alpha to be equals to 0 0.196 which is much lower than which is much lower than this uh, this value which means that those inputs which have the highest probability of switching try to put them closest to the output we have already discussed this point when we are discussing with you uh, the propagation delay now in case of input reordering also or input ordering also you have to ensure that highest transition uh, inputs which gives you highest probability of transition should be delayed and should be placed at the last most uh, gate for your kind for your for the consideration as you can see you have approximately 10 times decrease in the value of your uh, of your of your um, alpha and therefore your 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 dynamic power dissipation also goes down another methodology is time multiplexing the resources and this is quite interesting that what we try to do is that let us suppose i have two modules working together but uh, let us suppose i have got let me show it to you in this manner that i have got two modules working together and I have a block here and therefore they are talking with respect to each other. Now, these are all driven by let us suppose a clock or even a data. Now, this, this is behaving in such a manner that they have got a certain intrinsic delay say x. Right. Now, when the, so now you have fed an input here. This is processing, right. This is processing. Similarly, you do have some data, some, see, so this will process, give you a processed output goes to this combinational logical block and then you forward it to this much this this block so what what the concept is that till the time this be this is being processed to this first block right uh, you can do some processing of the internal blocks as well so that is what is known as a time multiplex resource allocation so you need to allocate resources here and try to make it uh, make it uh, less the uh, lowest switching activity 
uh, in this case. I will give an example for example, you have a parallel data coming into picture from A and B right and this is a series data. So, I have a mux here and I have a d mux here and uh, this mux serializes the data and this deserializes the data. So, this is basically a serial deserializer concept and you do have these output coming into pictures, pictures here. So, if you use such type of mechanism which is this one, then you allow for the capacitance to get charge and discharge and there will be a sort of a talking between A and B. As a result there will be heavy glitches in this particular point. Whereas, in this case you will have minimum glitch because there is only one line which is carrying the data from uh, this mux to this d mux and therefore, this will give you a much lower power dissipation as compared to the previous case. Uh, this takes care of approximately our understanding of uh, complementary logic to a larger extent and how complementary logics can be used for a least delay and least power in a very in a very sort of uh, first hand application area. We come to another one uh, where it is known as ratioed logic and uh, ratioed logic primarily means that this logic has got uh, uh, lower transistor count as the previous one as a consistency. So, if you remember in a CMOS pure CMOS architecture uh, you require for an N gate CMOS for an N input CMOS you require 2 N gates for a CMOS right. For a ratioed logic it is just N plus 1. So, if you are using a for example, a 4 input 4 input nor, nor uh, maybe an AND gate or whatever gate then for a CMOS logic input you require 8 transistors whereas, in this case you require just 5. So, the transistor count reduces the area reduces the cost you pay for it is higher power dissipation. So, they have got uh, extra power dissipation and we will explain to you why is it that. So, what we do is uh, the let in a ratioed logic uh, what we do is we always keep the pull up network as a single PMOS device which is always on let us suppose. So, what I do I have a load here the load which is given in this in, the, in this figure this is basically a PMOS and this PMOS is always on means its gate is always grounded. So, that is what I am saying that P u n is replaced by a single unconditional load right by a single PMOS and having exactly always on state. Which means that obviously, your output voltage will always be latched to VDD because by my definition uh, till even a complementary CMOS. So, therefore, my VOH which is output high will be equals to VDD no problem, but the problem is that your low voltage will not be equals to 0. Low voltage will not be equals to 0 it will depend upon the type of inputs you have given here right. Let us suppose you have given two, uh, two, uh, two transistors in series right and uh, you have given 1 1 uh, you have given 0 1 then 1 will be cut off and therefore, you, you will never get to 0 right is it is it ok. But there is a problem here and therefore, and therefore you will have a uh, I will explain to you why do you will have a static, static noise margin or you will have a static power dissipation I'll explain to you. See for example, if your this is your PMOS right and a PMOS has been switched on. So, it is grounded. So, it is always on and now I have got let us suppose a AND gate. So, I have got A B right and this is my F and this is a CL here. This is VDD and this is your VSS. Now, if A and B are both equals to 1 then this will be switched on, but when this is switched on you automatically have what you have a direct path between VDD and ground. So, your short circuit power dissipation short circuit is quite high PD your short circuit power dissipation is quite high why because now you have a direct path between VDD and VSS. So, though the logic will give you a good value, but otherwise it will it will it will not 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 give you a good value in re, in real sense. And that is the problem with static noise margins uh, with, with 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 sorry uh, with uh, the uh, the static power dissipation. Uh, the second thing is uh, we will not discuss in details, but it will reduce the noise margin as well. So pseudo NMOS logic or a pseudo logic it is also referred to as a pseudo NMOS logic, uh, also known as a ratioed logic, will have a lower noise margin right and the reason is that your pull up network and pull down networks are not equally strong. For example, your pull up network might be very weak because you are using a low value or W by L because you are you want the R L to be very high load to be very high you want W by L to be small, but once you make W by L small you are making a pull up weak when pull up is weak your noise high noise margin reduces right 
and that is a major area of concern for ratioed logic right and that is the problem area uh, uh, this thing. Now, therefore, uh, we since the output voltage depends on the size of the transistors, so it is called a ratioed logic. Why is it known as a ratioed logic? Because the output value of voltage will depend upon the size of the transistor. Higher the size, better the transistor will be able to uh, make the output voltage go to ground and lower the size difficult it will be go to, to the ground. So, therefore, this is known as a ratioed logic uh, as, as I discussed with you. Also, therefore, also this is also referred to as a pseudo NMOS inverter as I discussed with you. So, what I do I PMOS I make it grounded. So, this is always on state right and then I have a pull up pull up network with me. Now, as you can see here my my pull up network is is, is not strong because I only have one PMOS uh, here and therefore, your noise margin which is high noise margin is very small you see it is just this much almost approximately this much for W by L P 5 is this much. Which means that if the noise floor or the noise is typically high a low even then this will not be rejected by the by the by the inverter at high, high values. Now, as you can see here uh, when uh, so w by so this is w by l of p p mos so as the w by l of p mos is increased increased means r value goes on de reducing and you can easily have vdd appear as f and therefore you see you see your noise margin goes on increasing so the noise margin for w by l p 4 is approximately this much whereas it goes on reducing as you go on reducing the value of w by l of p so once the aspect ratio of your pull up transistor goes reducing your noise margin reduces not only noise margin reduces you also have a problem that for example, if you see a w by l p equals to 4 your output when your input is high should. So, when your input is high output should go to ideally go to 0 because let us suppose it is a 2 input AND gate then 1 1 will give you 0. So, but it does not go to 0 why it does not go to 0 the reason is you always have a direct path between V D D and this V S S. And higher the value of W by L, w by L of PMOS, lower its resistance, and bet larger current will be flowing through VDD and, and 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 VSS. As a result, it is never latched to zero in this case. So 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 at the, at the cost of higher noise margin, my output does not go to the zero value where it should go. And therefore, when you when you cascade a ratioed NMOS inverter to a, another one where you expect that the, so, so if you are cascading this inverter with another inverter and that inverter is expecting a 0 from this inverter, but in reality it is not giving me 0 it is giving me 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 voltage there will be problem as far as uh, its op operation is concerned. And that is a major concern of a pseudo NMOS logic the two concerns so one concern is that your output does not even go to uh, 0 or 0 it goes to 1 very well it does not go to 0 properly because if because because of the always on or no, uh, the uh, this pmos is always on right and the second property is its static power dissipations are very high so its overall power dissipations are very very high right so let me see how can you build a better load or maybe a good one and this is known as what is known as a differential cascoded voltage switch logic dcvsl differential cascoded voltage switch logic also known as DCVSL based on differential logic and positive feedback. So, what you do is very simple you have a PDN and you took a PDN 2 which is just complementary of PDN 1 and you apply both A and it is so yeah. So, if you have two signals you apply you also apply its 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 uh, its complementary signal and what it does it it totally removes your static power dissipation and you aut automatically get a rail to rail swing right and I will show you how it works out. So, you see this PMOS is connected out the output here is connected to the gate of PMOS M2 and out bar is connected to M1 gate here. Let us look at the functionality of a DC VSL XOR XNOR gate. Now, you see in this case if A equals to 1 right B equals to 1 and therefore, B bar will be equals to 0 in, in such a scenario uh, what I get is that uh, I have. So, so what I did so what I did was I, I just so I, I, I told you PDN should be complementary in the sense that if you apply A signal here you should apply A bar signal to PDN 2, if you apply B signal here you should apply B bar here, if it is B bar you apply B here right. So, let us suppose A equals to 1, B equals to 1, B bar equals to 0. When A equals to 1 and B equals to 1 this out goes to 0. So, out goes to 0. In this case A, A, A equals to 1 primarily meaning A bar equals to 0, 0 means this cut off 
when this is cut off means this goes to high. So, this goes to 1. This goes to 1 primarily means that this PMOS is goes to off and this is on. Once this is on, so this transistor works with this module to give you an output here. So, out becomes equals to 0 and out bar equals to 1. So, so in a DC VSL logic I insert differential signals, I also get differential signals back which is 0 and 1 here. Right? So, I input differential signals A and A bar, B A, A and B bar and I also get differential signals output out and out bar. This is what we get in DC VSL logic, but the idea here there is that there is no direct path between VDD and ground at any point of time, which was there in a pseudo NMOS logic. In a pseudo NMOS logic, uh, you did have a direct path from VDD to ground. In this case, you do not have any direct path. So, you do have a simple, so, so you see when this is on, right, and when this is on, you do not have a direct path. So, you see this is goes like this and this is the output which you see. So, so this is on right and this is this is switched on here, this is switched on, this is switched on and therefore, this output goes to 0 and therefore, it almost out as out bar equals to 1. And therefore, this gives you a very very low static power dissipation right. So, DC VL, so therefore, DC VSL provides a differential output and its complement uh, and therefore, it eliminates the use of extra transistors. So, you remember when we were using a ratioed logic or when we were using a standard CMOS complementary logic, my output will always be uh, uh, complementary. Remember by virtue of the fact that it is an inverter. So, you have to put an extra static inverter to complement it back to, uh, to its original form. So, I, will, I generally get f bar and therefore, when you pass it through a static inverter, I get f bar of bar and therefore, I get f ones. So, I am using one more static inverter to achieve the uh, signal. Uh, in in this case, we do not do that. In this case, we already get both the signals and is complementary together. So, the differential implementation reduces the transistor count by a factor of 2. So, you get a 2 times reduction in the transistor count um, uh, in this case. Uh, now, so I get so I get V out. So, so, this is a V out 1, V out 2, V out 1, V out 2. This single ended and this is a differential uh, operation as you can see V in I do and I get V out to V out. So, this is basically your DC VSL, but the problem is that V in should also be V in and you should also give V in bar or the complementary form should also be given right and that gives you quite a good idea about this uh, whole thing. So, let me recapitulate of this module what we have done till now. Uh, we have learned that the power consumption is a very very strong influence on the uh, on the switching activity. I mean switching activity has a has a, plays an important role in determining power consumption. The power consumption depends upon C L the load, V D D the applied voltage and F the frequency of operation. It also depends upon the topology uh, which you have with you and also depends upon dynamic glitches. So, the methodology we adopted for reducing dynamic glitches are, are logic restructuring, right? logic restructuring, input ordering and time multiplexing some, some of the techniques because these will reduce your dynamic hazards uh, and dynamic hazards appear because of finite propagation delay of the gates right? and that gives you an important one. To remove it people went for ratioed logic in which ratioed logic was, was, was were what that you replace the uh, pull up network by a single PMOS device uh, which is normally on and you make it always on because you ground your ground the gate of the PMOS and then uh, you try to get the output. But the problem there was that you had two problems one was that you did not allow the output to go to fully to ground if your if your uh, your load was having a large W by L ratio. Uh, because now the load will try to pull up the voltage towards itself and therefore, you would not allow it to go to ground and that is the major problem area and therefore, you and there and, and therefore, the second problem which came into picture was that the noise margins were reduced uh, drastically, especially the low noise margins were reduced drastically. High noise margin will depend upon the W by L ratios of the PMOS which you take. So, higher the W by L ratio larger will be the uh, uh, static noise margin in this case. Now, to reduce static power and to get a differential output, we did DC VSL which is differential cast coded uh, logic right and in which case uh, you use a differential input, you do a positive feedback and then you, uh, you do, you do uh, this thing. Uh, just to give you a brief insight, well, the positive feedback helps you to do what I will tell you, it tries to reduce the delay drastically. See when you have positive feedback uh, and suppose this is 0 and this is basically your 1 here, this 1, so this 0 
we will try to switch on this device very fast right and therefore, the overall delay of a DC VSL is reduced drastically. So, since it is a positive feedback you do not have to wait till a particular time for the output to appear and therefore, suddenly when it goes to 0 because by application of A equal to B equals to 1 and B bar equals to 0 I automatically get a much lower profile here right. So, we have understood this uh, whole logic here uh, we have therefore, taken care of ratio logic DC VSL understood what is power dissipation we also know what is the propagation delay. So, by this end of this module uh, you as a deliverable you should be able to deliver the logic you should be able to design a logic in a in a much better manner using CMOS technology using pseudo uh, NMOS technology and using a, a DC VSL and please try to do it uh, 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 as, a, as a sort of a home assignment. Uh, once you go back. Good book to look into is basically this is a good book by digital integrated circuits by a designer's perspective by Chandrakasan, Rabai and Nikolik. Uh, I will recommend that you please go through that book for at least the digital part. Analog part you will not get there, but the digital part of this whole course structure is very well defined in this in, in that case. Thank you. Thank you for your kind uh, patient hearing. Mm -hmm.